Hey everybody. So this week's journal entry and exercise is designed to get us from a very loose and general topic to a research question. I feel like I stressed this in one of my last videos, but I will say it again as I will say it again in future videos. You cannot do good research unless you have a fully flushed out research question. For your first project, I gave you that question. I gave you four choices for fake news stories, and then I said, can you please expose the fakeness of this story and tell me how to avoid it in the future? Question mark. Right? That was the question, and then we went in and looked into our articles, we did our research on our articles, we analyzed the articles, we talked about fake news in general, how to avoid it moving forward, because that's what the question led us to investigate, to research, and to write about. So in order to keep yourself grounded, you need to have a research question. And if you don't, your paper is going to be typically very general, all over the place. You'll find yourself having a lot of writer's block because you don't really know what to research or you don't know what to write because you have so many ideas and there's so many things to say. So, the point of generating ideas for research is to get you from a general idea to a slightly more specific one. The only way to do that is to generate ideas. So for this week, I'm asking you to generate ideas again, but instead of generating ideas in a general sense, where I asked you last week to look up information on COVID, I asked you to look up what's in the news about COVID, and I asked you to turn on um, your CNNs and your Fox and your other news media sources and just listen and watch what's going on. The reason I did that was because I wanted you to know that there's a lot of different things that people are talking about. It's not just people getting sick from this disease. There's a lot of other factors. There's an almost endless amount of ways in which COVID has affected everyday life, right? Um, so in order to get from that really just general idea we did that research last week, and hopefully at this point of the, our research project, you can say to me or to anybody else, um, I'm really interested in doing a paper on COVID and education. I'm really interested in doing a paper on COVID and the entertainment industry. I'm really interested in doing a paper on COVID and public spaces, so on and so forth. If you also, if you like one of those, feel free to, to take it. Um, but... We need to get from there to an even more specific question because how are you going to do a paper on COVID and entertainment? What Are you going to talk about all aspects of entertainment? Theater, movies, podcasts, music, concert, touring, um, box office movies, um, drive-in movies, streaming services? Are you going to talk about all of that in 8 to 10 pages? Maybe if you were writing a 100, 200 page book, you might be able to get in a good portion of that. But we're only doing 8 to 10 pages, and so you need to not just do a paper on COVID and education. You need to do a paper on COVID and successful ways for at-home learning, or COVID and tips for um, opening up schools again, or COVID and protecting teachers in the classroom, uh, or COVID and protecting students in the classroom, right? There's so many different things that you can do in terms of education, so you have to choose something really specific. Now, over the rest of the week um, and into next week, we're going to talk a lot about research questions and how to actually phrase them. But in the interim in the meantime you do need to do more work before we get to there if i were to start a lecture or a powerpoint on research questions it would be interesting and insightful but because you don't have a lot to think about in regards to a a research question 
you might forget a little bit about it and not help you, and it, it wouldn't help you out very much. So by doing what I'm going to ask you to do over the next four days for this journal entry, four, five, six days, however long, what I'm going to ask you to do for it is the steps you need to take in order to prepare yourself for that research question. Just like I said last week, if you don't generate ideas, you're not going to be able to get to a topic. If you don't generate ideas again specifically on what you want to do, you're not going to be able to get to that question. And your paper and your sanity will both suffer as a result. Um, so I just want to read a little bit here and then I'll explain, but it's for you as well. So for this week's entry, so, right, so here's what I'm asking you to do and then here's what I'm asking you to write. So I want you to do more research, but only specifically on the topic you've chosen. 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 Um, if you choose COVID and education, I want you to do a general search for as much additional information as you can find on the topic. So in, in, in <clears throat> excuse me, in essence, you are, instead of typing into Google COVID, you're typing COVID and education. Um, it might be hard to get this through the TV because the TV talks about what the TV wants to talk about, but you might be able to find information um, through podcasts or certain um, online media or publications because you can do uh, specific searches for things that you're looking for. So, I mean, do a Google search for COVID and education or type in, you know, how has COVID affected education into Google or Bing or Jeeves, if that's still a thing. Um, <clears throat> see what comes up. Now, I'm not saying with this you have to read every single article in depth. You can look at titles. You can read a little bit of it. You can skim. You can watch a little bit of it. You can listen to a little bit of it. The idea, again, here is not to necessarily find the sources you're going to use, but to more or less find out what you want to do. Um, you could think of it like... Um, like this, like you're trying to figure out all the things you can do so that you can make a better decision as to what you want to do. You know, if you only have a choice of one thing, you're going to choose that one thing, whether it's good or bad. If you have two, you know, hopefully one's better than the other, but you don't know. But if you have three or four or five things to think about and choose from, well, you have a lot, you have better options. All right, so how do you do this? The same way you did it last week, just with different keywords, you know, more specific searches that you're going with. Um, so after you've spent, I don't know, an hour or so doing that, um, generating ideas, filling your brains with interesting information, I want you to write this stuff down to address these four questions. So please do them in paragraph form so you can do four paragraphs. Number four will probably be pretty short. Um, <clears throat> try and hit 500 words. If you are a little less, I'm not going to freak out and you know scream. But if you're way, way under, it will affect your grade um, in the long run. So one, what specific subjects are you considering and why? Are pretty straightforward like okay I'm considering you know as an example you know <clears throat> education and online schooling considering education and protecting teachers I'm considering education um, and what future going back to school could look like what uh, excuse me what going back to school in the future could look like um, second paragraph why are you leaning towards one more than the other so pretty straightforward three what, what do you hope to learn and or prove after doing this research paper? So we're starting to think a little bit, you know, forward into the future. It's like, okay, I'm interested in doing this, but now you're starting to think, okay, you know, why do I want to do this? What am I hoping to get from this? Starting to drive that focus is going to really help with that research question. Um, and fourth and finally, 
um, at this very moment, what do you think your research question is going to be? So I'm going to do a video and a presentation and all the supporting materials for research questions in a little bit, um, probably in a few days. Um, but in the interim, like in, in the meantime, all good research questions start off as really bad research questions. And then you do a little bit more working and thinking and writing and processing and you come back and you refine and revise your question. Um, a lot of academics, a lot of writers will call it a working thesis, uh, excuse me, not a working thesis, a working research question, meaning that they come back to it and they're revising and it's changing and it's growing. Well, not growing, it's getting more specific, it's taking shape. But the only way to get to that really good one is to write down a few bad ones or a few weak ones, let's call them, and to think about, okay, how can I make this stronger? How can I make this more specific? And we're going to talk about how to do that, how to take a rough general question and turn that into something that's more specific and concrete. So that is journal two for the week. Please get on it. Um, the, f the longer you wait, the more journals you fall behind, the harder this project becomes and the more time consuming it will be. Um, I know I'm saying that this might take you an hour, an hour and a half this week for your research project, but um, if you do this now, it probably takes off two to three hours of you sitting at a computer doing frantic research, of you sitting at a computer not knowing what to say, of you sitting, um, of you getting up and walking away from the computer because of frustration and like saying, okay, I will come back in a few minutes. So. This work now really does help to save time in the end. Um, when it comes to a research project like this, um, how do I put this? It requires X amount of hours of work, legitimate work, if you want it to be strong, good. The more time you procrastinate, the less time you have to, to put towards it. So like I would honestly say that if, if you do want on the, the first go around an A on this paper, it's probably going to take you anywhere from an hour to two a week um, up until its due date. So that gives us eight weeks, -ish, seven, eight weeks. So, you know, about somewhere between like seven to like, 13, 14 hours of total time. Um, so it stinks when you have to do all that, you know, on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you go mad and you just don't want to do it anymore. So let's get on it. Let's keep working. Um, and there'll be videos tomorrow, Saturday, and probably Sunday with uh, more information about the project and things along those lines. All right, everybody, if you need me, reach out to me. Good luck. Thank you.